So this is the circuit for the series parallel lab that was in week five and week six. There was a video already made about this, but um, the video did not go on to um, show how the calculations were made. So we had our main schematic uh, diagram here, which has uh, what three, six, seven odd resistors powered by 15 volts. And you can see that we've got several current paths happening in the circuit. Um, the breadboard layout was given so that everybody wired up the circuit the same on their breadboard and all that is left now then is to go ahead and look at the calculations for those various current paths. I've done that here in colour and I've said this is the calculated values for the major lab but asterisk using current dividers because um, if we do it like uh, Schuster um, it would be with basic Ohm's law. Um, in this case though I've gone ahead and I've worked out the different currents in the different branches and I'll explain that in a second and um, then I've been able to use those currents with V equals I times R to get the voltages across individual components in each current branch. So I've used some different colours here. Different coloured pencils are really handy. I'm just showing a snippet here of some colours that I use. And uh, then I've, I've sort of looked at this circuit and said I've come out of the 15 volt uh, supply and the current flows through 270 ohms, then it comes in, splits down through 1K and through this other network of 680, 560 in parallel, down through 330 and along through 787 and back to here and then finally back out through the uh, 330 ohm resistor and back into the 15 volt supply. So we've got one lot of current uh, splitting from this first node, splitting down through the 1K, and one lot splitting and going into this other part of the network over here. I've drawn a bit of a red box around here, and then I've come down with that red box to another section on the page to explain that there's the 270 ohm resistor from the 15 volts, there's 1K, and there's 787 ohms. Now where did that 787 ohms come from? Where did this 14.423 milliamps come from? Let's explore that. First of all, the 787 ohms, um, that's these two resistors in parallel. I put a loop around first, and then I've uh, done the calculation on that. One on 680 add one on 560 equals one on the answer, 307 ohms. And then I put another red loop around that because that 307 is in series with the 330. And then I've, to give me 637, and then I've looped that 637 with 150 ohms to give me 787 ohms. So 787 represents these two resistances, this resistance and this resistance. And then we've got 1K in parallel with that 787. So 787 in parallel with 1K to give me an REQ of 440 ohms in this red box area. Before we can do anything much with this circuit, we have to go ahead and find the total current which is flowing from the voltage source. So to do that, I've had to get the 270 ohms, add it to the REQ of this red box, add it to the 330 ohms, 270 plus 330 plus 440 comes to 1040 ohms. Um, I equals V on R, so 15 volts divided by that 1040, brought it down there to give me 14.423 milliamps of current flowing. So I've drawn it on the circuit up there. Make sure you put plenty of detail on your circuit and make sure that you use colours where you can to differentiate things that you're working on on the circuit. Uh, that 14.42 milliamps flows into the circuit, 14.42 milliamps flows out of the circuit, satisfying Kirchhoff's current law, but of course then we're going to have this current branching that I spoke about before which is happening here. And uh, to work that out uh, we're going to have to go ahead and use the current divider equation which is REQ divided by RX times the node current in. So in that case we've got the 14.423 milliamps coming in through the 270 ohm resistor. That 270 ohm resistor is this one here. There's that current. Here's our red box area. 
and that's represented by these two resistances 1k and 787 ohms now rx i have to do case one and case two case one i had to have 440 ohms req divided by 1k times the node current in and working that out that'll give me 6.34 milliamps traveling down through the 1k branch and then the uh, case 2 440 the REQ divided by the 787 ohms that was this path around here 787 times the node current in which is 14.423 milliamps and that gives me 8.06 milliamps going down through that 787 ohm path or branch. Once I've done that, um, I've gone ahead and I've started to fill in some of the answers out of the lab. The lab did ask for the voltage across R1, the voltage across R7, the voltage across R6, etc. So VR1, using the total current, um, I've been able to multiply that by the resistance to get 3.89 volts. I've logged that down here. Um, I've gone ahead and done R7 next because it uh, seemed like a bit of a no-brainer because um, the same current travels through that, so it's just a case of use the same current value times 330 ohms to get 4.75 volts. And then VR6, R6 is the next one that I looked at, and I said, well, what's the voltage going to be across R6? I knew that the uh, uh, R6 value, which is that 1K there, we worked out using that current divider to have 6.34 milliamps across it, uh, rather going through it. So therefore, if we multiply that current times the 1K, VR6, 6.34 volts. And then we can do a bit of a check. If we add those values together, they will be equal to... 15 volts, which they are, and that was the supply voltage that we started with. And then VR4 and VR5, now VR4 and VR5 were in this branch up here, and that branch we worked out had 8.06 milliamps travelling through it. So 8.06 milliamps times 330 ohms to give us VR4, 2.661 volts. 8.06 milliamps again traveling through R5 so multiply the 8.06 milliamps times 150 ohms and that gives me 1.209 volts and then we come into a bit of a headache up here with the 680 and the 560 in parallel we knew that that had an REQ of 307 ohms resistors in parallel have the same voltage across each resistor so I can again use that 8.06 milliamps and I can multiply that times the 307 ohms REQ and that gives me VR2 and VR3 and that was 2.475 volts now that's so much for the voltages they're fairly straightforward but then we come to the currents and uh, we've already used some of these currents um, IR4 and IR5, 8.06 milliamps. That was IR4, IR5. And we'd work that out here with that uh, current divider. And then IR6, which was that 1K resistor coming down here. Here it is. Uh, we had 6.34 milliamps. IR1, which is the uh, first input resistor. IR7, the output resistor both shared the same total current of 14.423 milliamps but then that leaves IR2 and IR3 little bit tricky there you've got another current divider um, you've got the uh, current coming into these two resistors and then that current splits part through 680 part through 560 we knew that there was uh, 8.06 milliamps traveling down through this network so that 8.06 comes in and then splits. So we can work again using this REQ and uh, working with the different value resistors. And I've squashed that into the bottom of the page down here. Um, R2, 680 ohm. R3, 560 ohms. 
and uh, the calculations are REQ divided by uh, R2 and REQ divided by R3 and in both cases multiplied by the node current coming in which is 8.06 milliamps. So we get finally 3.63 milliamps for IR2 and 4.41 milliamps for IR3. Of course they could have been worked out simply using Ohm's law as well. If you didn't want to go to the trouble of using a current divider, we knew the voltage across R2 and R3. We'd already worked out that that was 2.475 volts. So we simply could have gone along and said I equals V on R, that would be 2.475 volts divided by firstly 680 ohm to give me one answer and secondly divided by 560 ohms to give me the other answer. So um, the video that we saw by Schuler did it all using Ohm's law, like basics, and I did it using current dividers, which are a ratio method, and uh, on the day, I tend to think that is a easier way to do it, certainly for me.